Mila, would you like to start? It's eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Make sure, guys, to invite friends or share the space, and uh, yeah, we can start. Perfect. So, first of all, how are you doing? There was a lot of activity this past week from Battle for Geostone. A lot of posts, a lot of whitelist giveaways. We're going to give away 20 whitelist spots today. A lot of new partnerships. What's that all about? Yeah, so, yeah, in the last uh, few months, we were focused heavily on uh, developing the game and developing all the features, futures, and all that stuff. So, now, uh, finally... When we have something ready, which is playable, we could we can finally move on the marketing aspect of the game and just try to get as many partners as we can, and uh, yeah, just try to raise awareness about the game in the community. So, yeah, Avalanche is one of our first partners and supporters, and they are like really nice guys. I like the team. We are working together on uh, many fields and it just feels great to be part of this uh, amazing ecosystem. We all that's, for- that's great. Yeah, and we- oh, sorry, yeah, sure. Okay. So we I wanted to say that we also uh, partnered up with uh, other guilds like uh, Rio Deal Guild so and Sky Meta as well. Two of the biggest guilds uh, in this space. And, uh, yeah, well, I'm so happy and excited. And I think uh, we're going in the right direction. Okay, perfect. So one interesting thing that happened uh, a while ago is that Real Deal Guild, four of their influencers reviewed the game. They reviewed everything from the new website. We also have a new website. So anyone that hasn't seen it can go ahead and take a look. So they reviewed the, the website, they checked out the white paper, and they also showed a little bit of sneak peeks from the game. So did you play with them before? Did you win against them? <laughs> How did they like the game? Well, everyone is excited. Yeah, I showed them some uh, gameplay, and uh, they are excited. Like, uh, the, the CEO of Real Deal Guild is also a mobile gamer. He's uh, very impressed with the game. And the actual gameplay and mechanics and their community is just uh, like going crazy and waiting to be one of the alpha testers from the game so yeah i'd say it, everyone that played so far likes the game and i cannot wait to show you actual gameplay footage and uh, it will be tomorrow <laughs> Ah, so that's like a sneak peek and make everyone interested. Okay, so the topic for today is we're going to talk a little bit about GameFi and the space. First of all, what are your opinions about GameFi overall? How do you think that the space is progressing up until now? Or you, do you think that Battle for Geostone is going to change everything? What's your outlook on the space at the moment? Well, uh, I'd say that uh, the, yeah, there are many projects right now that are trying different things. And... Uh, there is nothing uh, much to say, to be honest, because all the current economies there are functioning. hello. Can you hear me well? Uh, sorry, something interrupted. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, everything's okay. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, all the current economies that we know basically function in the uh, same way. So the way they work is uh, they have, uh, like most of them have like two token economy and one is like uh, inflationary token, which is unlimited supply, uncapped token, and the other one is like governance. And many games and many economies like this have, uh, have gone uh, close to zero so after a certain time after they get some popularity. So we have seen and proven that this economy and this model is not actually working. And uh, that's why we... I mean, there are other games with uh, different economies, but they are still not out, and we cannot say about them anything. So I just... I really wait to see some games with different economical aspect and different economics to actually... uh, to actually uh, start uh, releasing something, start uh, 
like release their game, release their economy, so we can actually see how will they perform. And yeah, our game is one of those games that with different economies. So yeah, like nobody knows what what's gonna happen, right? We are still building on the edge, and uh, yeah, we just hope for the best. But the way we we design the our economy is basically deflationary, and actually we can control the the relation uh, BFG GST to prevent this oversupply thing. Perfect. That's great. So now, here's my opinion on the GameFi space. There, there are a few people, a lot of people, who enter the crypto space because they want to make a profit. A lot of people entered the crypto space after the pandemic when Bitcoin started to rise. They wanted to make a lot of money. They buy a coin at, let's say, $100. They sell it when they have $200. That's one type of people. The second type of people that come to the space are people who are really interested into the blockchain technology. They are very interested into smart contracts, how everything is going to work, that it's immutable, that nothing can be changed. And there's the final group of people who are here for the fun. So Battle for Geostone needs to have a space for all those people. So how will we integrate both the investor type of people who want to enter and make a profit, all those sorts of things, and the people who are here for the fun and the technology? So since we're creating on the brink, we're intersecting Web2 and Web3 technologies. So how will that look like with the BFG token and GSP and all those sorts of things? Mm, yeah, so what? Uh, so yeah, you, you said it right. We want to be able to welcome everyone in, the, in our community and our game. So not only people that are gamers, but people that are investors and people that are into cryptocurrency as well. So... Uh, we have designed something uh, unique and uh, <clears throat> something that no one else has done before to be able to to welcome everybody in our space. So for gamers that have, that are looking for fun, we obviously have the game. They can play the game. They can buy skins. They can play ranks with friends. They can climb the ranks, get on the leaderboards and uh, compete in esports. So... For gamers that actually want to make a professional career, we aim to become an esports title and have uh, esports tournaments organized. So that way, people that want to make money out of the game can actually play the game to climb the leaderboards and earn some BFG. Like we want to have a separate leaderboards for teams and players, but it's not, nothing is confirmed or anything. It's just like visions what we want to achieve. And also, we have this uh, esports system where we want to have a couple of seasons per year and uh, reward the best teams uh, with BFG or maybe USD as well. So, yeah, that's the idea to welcome the gamers that want to earn something. But they're not into crypto that much, but they want to earn from gaming. So, yeah, we have this esports system and leaderboards. Then we have people that just want to have fun. They can enjoy the game get skins whatever trade them you know interact with the with uh, the other the, the other community members to exchange items and everything else and finally we have the guys that are here to invest something and the guys that uh, let's say helped us uh, when we were early and the guys that don't care about the game but they just want to make some profit yeah of course we have uh, something for them too and we actually want to have place for them in our ecosystem as well because what they can provide is basically uh, funds or some uh, other things like staking and one thing to reward and one way to reward people that are here just to make some profit or make uh, like investment is by staking but not staking like everyone else or like staking with staking fund but our staking is actually based on real revenue. So if there is revenue in the game, if there are people liking the game and playing the game, as long as there is revenue, there will be funds that's, that's for staking. So the whole staking story is based on revenue. So when someone is staking BFG, he's not a gamer. Yeah, he don't want to play the game. Yeah, of course. But he need to believe in the game, that the game is good, 
either believe in the game or believe in the team. So he's trusting to put to buy BFG and stake those BFG. And by staking those BFG, he's actually not artificially increasing the BFG price because of some uh, imaginary fund for staking. But it's actually a real thing, you know. You're getting actual revenue from the game by either, like, it can be from marketplace fee, it can be from cosmetics, from tournaments, whatever, right? It's revenue, and those revenue will be shared with those who stake BFG. So, yeah, that's the three type of people that are, are members, community members that want to join our game and we have space for every one of them. Okay, so now let me ask you about the fourth type of person. The fourth type of person is the guy or the girl that we want to attract to play Battle for Geostone instead of Dota, League of Legends or Mobile Legends. How would we do it? Because, you know, they grew up playing these games. They won't drop their favorite hobby just because they became older or something. But this Battle for Geostone is more modern. It's on the brink of innovation. How will we make, not make, but persuade those people to come and join and test out and play the game? Yeah, so uh, one way to do it is, uh, yeah, that's called, uh, one way to do it is basically by uh, presenting our uniqueness and our unique uh, unique uh, things in the game, which is the abilities. So we got all these 72 abilities, right? And we have six classes for now, which is not limited to six. In future, there can be 50 classes, who knows, without any new abilities, but just different stats. So we have all these things in the game, and it's really fun. And it's really um, not time consuming and it's fun because you can create your own hero and your perfect character that you can imagine, right? In Dota and League of Legends, you are limited. You cannot play whatever you want. You can pick one of the 100 heroes. But here, instead of 100 combination, you have 3 million possibilities and 3 million combinations, actually. So... Yeah, I think that's the most unique part in our game, that there are three million combinations for heroes and that everyone can basically build their favorite character with their favorite abilities and then just add more skins to it and just uh, the fun is not ending. That's great. So, okay, one thing that I thought about during the week was very interesting when I saw the map. So I don't know what are your opinions on land and the metaverse and building in the metaverse. But do you think that the map in Battle for Geostone will be something that will be considered as land so people want to buy, for example, the place where Geo spawns so that the more kills happen there, they maybe earn some tokens or something like that. Or maybe people who will create games, I mean, create maps, and then those maps can be offered as land or something like that. NFTs in that. Uh, yeah, custom games are actually something very cool. We haven't think about it yet. I mean, we have think about it, but we haven't started developing something like that because it's uh, too resource consuming and time consuming. But it's definitely something that we might want to look into because allowing the community to make their own custom games is actually on, on top of our engine and game. It will be really interesting and making those custom games nfts i don't know if that makes sense actually because it will be just different maps and different uh, things you know so yeah I, I i guess custom games is always an option but about lens i i think one way to do it would be with different map styles that's something really interesting so we can have like some summer spring uh, winter maps uh, Christmas maps, you know, all these different type of maps that will be NFTs for sure and tradable in the marketplace. That's perfect. Okay, so one other interesting thing is the... Let's go back to the investors. In 2021, more than $150 billion went to gaming. I mean, Fortnite, Dota, League of Legends, uh, all those games made a lot of money. But when you take a look at the play to earn or play and earn sector, only $10 billion have been like uh, swirled. What 
and when do you think will be the critical point when this modern type of gaming will overtake traditional gaming? Because in the case of this classical gaming, all the $100 billion went to the game companies. But if it's into the play and earn sector, it will go back to the players. So when will that revolution happen? Do you think it will have something to do with the next Bitcoin having the next crypto cycle? Or is the correct game needs to come out and then everything will take a swing? Well, uh... I, I don't think uh, Bitcoin or price of the ma- or the market condition have something to do with this, but actually, I my honest opinion is when someone creates a sustainable economy that is uh, so that sustains more than two three years without some drastic changes, and also a user friendly game where everyone can play the game without having to pay anything first. So when we combine those two things, then I think we can start seeing some kind of mass adoption. Not, But but it's just the beginning. I, I think at least two years from now to see some mass adoption. Because first, if you try to explain uh, Web3 to some Web2 gamers, it's uh, first they hate NFTs. I don't know for which reason. But they yes. hate the NFTs, and second thing is just too complicated for someone that uh, for someone that's not uh, in in the in the crypto space to join some game and uh, just learn to use crypto because of that game. It 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 will not happen just like that for sure. So I think that the perfect combination and the perfect thing that needs to be made so people from Web two join Web three is actually people need to be able to play the game for free. When someone is able to download the game from the App Store, Play Store, or for PC, and just click play and play the game, or just create an account and play the game, I think that's the first step when Web2 gamers can be shifted into Web3 without even noticing, right? Because if you promote your game based on your tokenomic, or your token, or your NFTs, then it's not the the way that you will attract Web2 people. But if you promote the game as esports game, a game where everyone can play, a game that everyone can play and fun game to be played, but later just introduce that they can really own their skins and trade them for real money in open marketplace. Like at some point, someone will want to actually see what's going on and try. To, to catch up with Web3 and that's how eventually they will turn. Or third option is esports, right? Or third option is esports. So yeah, esports is also a great way to uh, attract Web2 people by organizing uh, cool tournaments, big prize pools, and uh, yeah, and also uh, something important is uh, who from the who else is gonna play right obviously we have Tibon like uh, he's pioneer in mobile gaming he has been in five or six internationals and people love to hear his opinion so we have all, also more people like uh, himself that are that want to play or want to try our game and if we are able to prove them that we have interesting and good game to play, then well, I, I think we will start going uh, and and start our mission, and that's attracting Web2 games. But yeah, I believe that we are, we have a long way to go before we come to some mass to some level of mass adoption. To be honest. Okay, so what about whales? What about whale investors? So will somebody have the option to come in and buy a lot of BOG tokens and then just use his governance to create a game that he wants? How, how will that work? Until when is the team going to be in control and, and how will they listen to the community? So, for example, sometimes the meta will not be equal for some type of hero. Maybe some hero will be overpowered. When can people expect changes to happen? Will there be changes during the meta? Will the alpha version be, will be used only for that? Will there be seasons like in Dota where you can reach Immortal for one season and 60 days then it goes again? How will that work? Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, about Wales, I don't really, I, I don't think that's a problem because we haven't announced the governance yet and there is no real governance token uh, up until now. To be honest, the team is controlling the game and the gameplay because we believe that if the if people trust the team, then that then the team can deliver good things. There needs to be some balance because if you if you let's say uh, leave it to the community, it can go sideways. It can go in in wrong hands, right? But if you st- trust this team and if you really want to <clears throat> to play fun game, you need to trust our team, and we are the one that will take care for everything to be balanced. And about meta, yeah, there will be always meta, but I think items are, uh, yeah, this is like, uh, this idea came from Tibon because initially we didn't, we were not going to have items in the game, but now it's totally different and Tibon uh, gave the idea that items can be the perfect uh, thing to balance the game actually without without nerfing some uh, abilities or heroes. So let's say, if we have some ability that deals heavy magic damage, we can have item that, and we can increase some magic resistant item, and then may basically not change the ability, but with this item you can counter this ability. So yeah, I think that will, that's the way how we are going to balance this thing. Okay, so NFTs, <laughs> a lot of people think of them negatively, but they do have collector's value. Some NFTs are truly one of a kind. Do you think that some people will join into Battle for Geostone just because they think that these first NFTs that will be given out, for example, the first few heroes, all those sorts of things, will have collectible value in the future? For example, if you take a look that giants like Blizzard, Valve, Riot Games all paved the way for esports to function in places like the Staples Center where the LA Lakers played. And if sometimes in the near future, a battle for Geostone is a tournament is played there. Will these NFTs have more value? What do you think about that? Well, that basically skins in Web2. That's called skins in Web2. So, yeah, skins will always have value because they will be unique and seasonal. So it's not like collectible for no reason, but it have reason, right? It looks different. So when you play this hero in the game, your hero will look cooler than 99% of the other players heroes so basically you have this hero let's say uh range warrior with some purple wings you know some crazy design purple wings or some gold wings and everyone else have these black basic wings so that gives you good feeling you feel good because you have something that no one else does uh yes so yeah, I, I think that's the real value with the cosmetics and the skins. Not the, like, yeah, collection is okay, right? But there needs to be a reason for the collection. Why do I want to collect this? Because my hero will work really different and nicer compared to other guys. And that's a valid reason to be collecting something, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So one interesting thing that uh, has happened before is I've watched a lot of crypto YouTubers that are making videos and posting about how much money they're making with a one hour of gameplay when a new game comes out, all those sorts of things. And a horde of investors and people and players all try to ride the wave. So they just come into the project, they want to play, they want to make money, and that often leads them to losing money. So that creates a negative stigma for some type of project. How are we going to avoid that? Because as you said before, Battle for Geostone is not going to be like a game where you can earn a living from it. Instead, you're going to earn like ten to fifteen dollars a month. You can go grab a beer with your friends, maybe mm-hmm. do all those sorts of things. Will yeah. that be the case? From the start. Uh, well, n- n- that's not entirely true. You couldn't basically make a living from Battle for Geostone if you play professionally or if you decide to build a career out of it. Join professional team, win some tournaments, and to get uh, money because tournaments are designed to reward people with big prize pools, you know, and that's a way to make a living from the game. And another thing, and another way to make a living out of the game is to be on high on the leaderboards every season. 
and you will still re- receive BFG rewards for that. But if you just want to play the game without having competitive spirit or something, and you just want to play uh, like like a robot, you know, to win and to win against someone that doesn't care either and earn something from it, yeah, that's not how it will work. You will be able to earn something, but it will be most likely beer money. Yes, the, the most important thing about Battle for Geostone is that it's a game... When you start playing Dota or MOBA or any sort of those games, you're not looking at the earning aspect right from the start. You're looking whether it's a fun game and whether you can make your skills good enough. So maybe sometimes in the future you could be a part of, let's say, first that Immortal or Mythic rank, and then you can think of anything else. So now let's go back for a little bit. You've played the game a lot. <laughs> Everything's good. What is your favorite hero and what are your favorite abilities to play? Well, myself, I like complex mechanic heroes. I like uh, like hero like I like heroes that have uh, multiple things to control, like uh, micro skills. I want I like everything that's complex, basically, <laughs> in, in all games. So yeah, I I would like to I would would like we to have some complex hero. But and abilities, but I'm just not sure how it will work on mobile, and we need to discuss that stuff. Okay, perfect. So the first thing that's gonna happen with Battle for Geostone, it's gonna be a desktop version, not a mobile one. So how how is that progressing? Are we close on the bugs? Do we have another release date? Maybe something for people to expect. All the alpha testers, how can they become alpha testers? Do they need to follow us on social media? Maybe complete some tasks for them to try out the game. Yeah, so uh, tomorrow we are releasing official gameplay from the game and official highlights from a full Battle for Geostone 5 versus 5 match where we as a core team played and had a lot of fun. So people can expect to see actual real gameplay tomorrow. But uh, about uh, release dates, about releasing and other alpha testing, I think we're still uh, some couple of months away and I honestly believe that we can have our first uh, pre-alpha uh, version of the game some sometimes in October, October or maybe November, some pre-alpha version for the people that own NFT. But for testers, for just someone that want to test the game, We'll release more information very soon and uh, uh, we'll ask people to complete some simple form to sign up as a tester and we'll have some server that will be opened so people can test the game in different regions and give us feedback and bugs. But first we need to to polish our user interface and make the game look uh, more interesting uh, from the designing perspective, from the user interface perspective. Because right now, it's just uh, some placeholders that you will see tomorrow in the gameplay. Okay, great. So if anyone else that's listening at the moment would like to ask a question, they can just simply request to become a speaker and we can ask them to ask their question, ask Mila anything about the game. Uh, okay, another interesting thing in Battle for Geostone is how... Will the spectators be involved? Because one of my favorite things about watching MOBAs is watching other influencers and maybe crypto YouTubers make those compilations uh, from viral videos, funny moments, bugs from the game, (laughs) maybe the game crashing, uh, all those sorts of things. It's very fun for people who play the game to watch professionals do it. Because in other play to earn games, it's not fun to watch. I mean, it's fun for the player because they're earning money. But in Battle for Geostone, this is going to be completely different. Because you have five people from one place, five people from another place, and they're completely crashing it in the jungle or maybe battling it for the Dragon Geo. What are your opinions on that from the spectator's t- standpoint? Yeah, uh, as a spectator, I think the game will be very fun to be to watch because I have seen our replay from yesterday or today, and it's so fun to watch the whole game and and, the, and these interesting moments because the game is more focused on team fights and team play and uh, things like that 
but uh, not more focused on farming or you know hitting creeps or jungle monsters so you spend more time fighting with actual people and that's something that's really interesting for for the for the guys that want to watch esports right so there will be more action involved in the game and yeah you you will see for yourself tomorrow for sure when we release the gameplay Perfect, great. Okay, so one interesting thing about uh, Battle for Geostone and the whole space in general is uh, that people, you know, the, the blockchain aspect on, from it. Instead of having minimal functionality in trading where people go to, you know, uh, sell their items or heroes on a forum, they can do it on the marketplace. So a lot of people have tried making money from games even before. Games like Second Life, World of Warcraft, maybe Dota selling heroes, selling accounts. So we are aware that some people will sell their accounts. Will that be an issue? Will that be a problem? For example, if somebody is a good player, they can buy a hero or create an account and then play for until they reach a specific rank and then sell that account to another person. Will that be an issue or not? And why? Well, yeah, that's why accounts uh, are not NFTs because they don't uh, need to be sold, right? Everything else that can be sold and tradable is actual NFT and people can sell that. But accounts is different story because, yeah, as you said, if there is like different ranks, you know, there is different ranks and different skills, but it's basically not worth it for you to buy an account because... You will be losing every game, you know, and uh, yeah, that I, I'm sure that they will be account buying, but that's unfortunate and we'll try to punish those uh, OTC deals, account buyers and uh, and similar things. Because you can buy account for one of two reasons. One reason is because you would like to, let's say, earn more tokens or I don't know, and you want to have some high rank account. But then you will be obviously matched with people that are not in your say in the same bracket, and then you will most likely lose every game, and people will get frustrated and they will report you. So yeah, with that that's one way how we want to track those accounts, track down and ban those accounts. And how about multi accounting? For example, there is a scholarship program in X Infinity where people want to buy NFTs for their scholars where they can earn money. What if somebody who has a lot of money wants to buy a lot of these NFTs from Battle for Geostone and maybe just play a few games themselves? Let's say they play for an hour and then they give it to a player in the Philippines or Venezuela so they can play for two or three hours and then constantly they play the game. Will there be an energy system? Will multi-accounting be banned? How will that work? Uh, not really, because we want to to have heroes for like ten bucks or fifteen bucks, so uh, everyone can afford fifteen dollars for a hero. Even someone that you know, no one would uh, would like to play on someone's other account, but he'd rather buy account for himself because it's not you don't need three, five, ten heroes. You need one hero to be able to play to earn. GST, sorry to play, you can do it for free. And uh, multi accounting is uh, basically inefficient because you cannot play more games at once, more matches at once, but you can play only one. If you try to play more in one time, you're gonna lose for sure. Perfect. Okay, so what about battle passes or those things like that? Like that? They're definitely gonna be battle passes. But what are they going to do in the game? Or will you have to spend the BFG or GST tokens to buy it? Or only BFG? Or only use a credit card? Or maybe burn a hero as an NFT to reduce the number of heroes to get a battle pass? How will that work? And what will people get from that battle pass? Yeah, so battle pass is basically designed for cosmetics. Most of, uh, yeah. Uh, and it's also a way to fund our tournament or our uh, replay rewards fund. So what's going to happen when we release a battle pass? It will be near some tournaments, some, which will be close to some esports tournament. And um, that will, it, it's like a book. So when you open the book, each uh, time you level up, you open a new page and you get a reward for your new level. 
then you can either buy levels with BFG or you can play the game and win to gain some levels. And you, what you obtain from that season will be seasonable and after we close the, this battle pass, no one else can obtain this item from the battle pass, but only from the marketplace if someone else is willing to sell that. Okay, so since there will be cos cosmetics and there are a lot of artists in the NFT and blockchain and crypto space, will there be like giveaways or maybe competitions where the community can create the ideal skin and there will be like voting mechanisms or which skin gets added into the game, maybe the most beautiful one, maybe the most, I don't know, something like that. So the community can interact with the game. Well, uh, I... We be, we want to make a system like this for guilds and teams that are professionals and uh, that are like well-known guilds and top-tier guilds and teams. So I'm not talking like popularity, but uh, good at the game. So like the top uh, 16 or like top 20 or top 50, I don't know how many, will... Uh, we will make uh, some exclusive deal with them so they can uh, create uh, cosmetics with their branding on it and actually yeah try, sell them and get part of the show of the revenue great so one other thing that popped into my head is that one of the best things about uh, battle for geostone is that there are two types of tokens you know bfg which is the governance blockchain based all those sorts of things and the other one is gst which is an in-game currency like gold so battle for geostone is essentially immune to hacks right because you can't break the game when you have an innate currency. That would be like breaking uh, Dota and giving yourself a lot of gold. It's not going to be pretty useful. Is that right? Uh, I, I didn't quite understand the so, do, you mean, do you mean the GST token or the gold in, the game, in every match? No, 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 not the gold in every match. So, for example, if you're somebody like a hacker and you want to make money, the, let's say the hackers that exploited X Infinity, if you try to exploit Battle for, Battle for Geostone, you're not going to be successful because the game itself cannot be broken. You have only a GST token, which is not useful. It can only be converted into Battle BFG, which will be limited. There will be someone overseeing it. And you would not be able to give yourself a lot of gold. It would not be useful for you. It would be like giving yourself a lot of gold in Dota. You will just be able to buy a few heroes. That's not going to make sense for anyone to try and use a lot of their brain power for. Well, yeah, they, they could basically uh, kind of hack the database or, you know, but the thing is first we want to protect this thing as much as we can to make sure this will never happen. Then have regular daily, like maybe uh, more than that backups and if we and there will be an ai monitoring everything for sure so if there's some unusual unusual activity like a sudden increase of balance of gst to some account it will basically tell us the red flag so we can investigate and see what the reason behind it so yeah i, I don't think that will be so profitable if if someone did it let's say Another interesting thing you mentioned is the AI algorithm. So that's pretty fun. Can you explain it to people? Because that's one of my favorite things about the game, that it will work based on network activity, daily active users, and all those sorts of things. Yeah, so uh, let's say we have a goal to maintain the four price for the hero, for a hero, right? So random hero, for not meta hero, some uh, four hero, and we, let's say we want to maintain the price. And one way how we could do that is by uh, adjusting the forging price and uh, keeping it, uh, uh, keeping it uh, like, uh, I don't know how do I say it, but we can make balance of those things and uh, then uh, make sure for example, if the floor price is going very high, like, let's say like $50 per hero, then we might reduce the forging costs with GST. 
So forging a hero will be like three times cheaper. So people would rather forge and then buy from the marketplace. And, and that's how we would like to balance this thing and make sure that we have balanced economy in the game. Yes, and another interesting thing is that it would be much better for people to forge heroes with their GST instead of converting it to BFG, right? Yeah, because if you convert your uh, GST to BFG, then there's no way you can forge a hero, but you can just buy from the marketplace. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Does anyone else have a question? So we are open to questions right now. You can raise your hand. I think you can get it, right? Yeah. Okay, no one is getting a question. So one interesting thing is that we're offering 20 whitelist positions. So everyone who joined will get a whitelist position because at the moment we're 11 people. So that leaves nine extra whitelists for some lucky people. Yeah, so. sure. Uh, yeah, I think uh, overall I want, I have some things to say that for, for everyone that joined and everyone who is interested in Battle for Geostone is make sure to well, first make sure to follow us because many new interesting things are coming and uh, esports, the tournaments and skins and all these things that gamers deserve are coming in Web3 so you can finally play a good game on, on, on your device and uh, yeah, just make sure to follow us, get the updates, and uh, soon we will also re release uh, information on alpha testings and all that stuff. We're doing a lot of giveaways, we're doing a lot of free NFTs, we're doing a lot of this stuff and trying to uh, raise awareness of the game. So just also make sure to tell your friends about it, people that are interested in mobile games, and uh, interested in crypto in general, try to raise awareness about different economy that we have, about uh, revenue sharing. And yeah, I, I think together we're going to make it because the community is really the most important part of everything. So yeah, that, that that's, I want, that's all I have to say. And for everyone to, not tonight that joined, you can guys feel free to share your address and I will add you to the whitelist uh, and I will give you one whitelist spot to everyone that joined. I think it was like 30 people maximum, like unique that joined in the space. So yeah, make sure that everyone who joined gives uh, uh, us his uh, address. And yeah, that's it. Let, let, let's do it together, guys. Thank you, Mile. It was a pleasure talking to you. So, as, as Mila said, follow us on Twitter. We're pretty active there. There's going to be a lot of new updates. Join our Discord. Take a look at our new website. And feel free to become a part of some of our ongoing competitions, contests, and all those things. Thank you very much, guys. And we're going to see you again next week. Bye-bye. Bye. It was nice to speak to you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.